Mm. All right. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Uh, welcome to our monthly town hall gathering. Thank you for um, taking time today to join us. We've got so many exciting things uh, happening and very grateful to have you here on this journey with us. Um, if you just got the newsletter and you got a little bit of a heads up, um, if you want to say got the newsletter or didn't get the newsletter in the chat, it'd be great. We'd love to hear if you're following us on, on this journey. Um, and so here are, let me just kind of keep going here. My PowerPoint is acting up. So today, as normal, we'll touch touch bases on the mission and vision, which we're really excited. Uh, you'll see as on line item number three, um, we are talking about a rededication ceremony and celebration coming up. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the implications, understanding um, some of the bank failures and what's what's happening. I love what what Cheryl said today. To, uh, you know what what the bank is going on. <laughs> if you did mm -hmm. see the email, that was probably what you saw to hopefully help you open it. And if you didn't, please go back and look at that. Uh, we'll also be doing our breakout session uh, networking and then open it up for Q&A. And so I'll pause for a moment so we can read our mission and vision just to connect all of us and why we're here. And, and please, if something stands out for you today, please put that in the chat of what um, speaks to your heart in the mission and vision. So for me, it's fulfilling God's will, having him be the CEO and boss and <laughs> director of the ship. Um, we'd love to hear if there's anything else that stands out for you. And so today, I have the opportunity of introducing some of our amazing team. Those of you, um, many of you have had the opportunity to speak with Thomas Richter. He is, wow, the Senior Advisor of Alternative Financial Concepts. He's kind of the go-to guy um, with all things KCT. And one of the things that I love about him is he's kind of like the silent secret weapon. And I know weapon's probably not the best word, but he's somebody that he'll take information in, he'll listen, and then when he speaks, it's like, oh my gosh, we've got to pay attention. Uh, and I love that he also has a very strong sales background, um, dealing in wide range of, of um, organizations. Thomas, do you want to add anything to this part as we're going through intros? You know, only that uh, the journey that, that I've been on started about 12 years ago. Um, right about the time I turned 50 years of age, when I really started to, as Karen, or as uh, Shannon said, really wanted to know where, <clears throat> what's God up to. And I know he's up to something, but I really wasn't paying much attention to where he was at, what he was doing. But when I started to pay attention to where he's at and what he was doing, I had a very simple prayer. It's just like, show me where you're working. And if you want me to be involved in that thing, help me to build a relationship so I can be a part of that thing. So that's what really brought me um, 10, a little over than 10 years ago. It's right about the same time I met Larry Tyler. So um, don't let Larry scare you away from the community. As a, as a, as a, as a 40 year banker, he's a, he's a reformed, a, a reformed, uh, what should I say? A, a reformed prisoner of bondage. Bankster. Yeah, bankster. If, bankster, yeah, a former bankster. Former bankster. I yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. We have Erin Strayer, who is not here today, but this woman is, those of you that have been touched by her brilliance, her wisdom, um, all the way from, from technology to um, really getting your message out there in a bigger way and developing those strategic plans. And one of the other things that I love about Erin is if you're stuck, this woman really helps you get unstuck and finding the, the ways to, to move around. Um, we also have Larry. Are we call, We're not calling him a bankster, right? Former bankster. Cash flow whisperer. Cash flow, that's a, yeah. He's he looks like a bankster. <laughs> yeah, I, I wore it too long, Jim. <laughs> um, and hopefully you've been touched by Larry's wisdom. Larry is the cash flow whisperer. 
he really helps us understand uh, the movement of money, the, the, the power of money, and, and really um, this, how, to, how to navigate it through, um, I have to say, implementing, sorry if I'm, I get to be perfectly imperfect today, um, but this mission that we're on of reinventing private equity as a function of cash flow, uh, having Larry a, bar, a part of helping us understand and really um, know how to leverage it is powerful. Larry, anything you want to add in this segment? Thank you, but I, I can't improve on what you just said, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for all you do. And Cheryl Bassett, oh my gosh, this woman is leveling up so many things all the way from brand, brand messaging, um, and really, the, you know, when you think of a, a hub or um, a, a connector to all parts, um, uh, Cheryl is so brilliant at seeing how one seed connects to all of the, the pieces that go along with it, both with KCT and, and various businesses. And she definitely brings the good and crazy, which I love that aspect of, of um, having the opportunity to work with you. Cheryl, anything you want to add? No, I just always have to be reminded by Erin that I'm the good and she's the crazy. <laughs> and but but we do flip it back and forth some, so anyway. well, but okay. actually, yeah, lots of great stuff going on with King's Council. So much, move, so many moving pieces right now. And so, um, but I love it because it's all, it's all working towards something. So it's beautiful. Beautiful. And thank you for what you're doing to keep it, keep it going. Really appreciate it. And I'm Shannon Procise, um, and I love helping people raise capital, whether it be through sponsorship or membership or or using this amazing instrument, the Royalty Relationship Sharing Covenant. Um, also help syndicate messages on a big level, creating press kits and things like that. Um, and then we have Joshua. And Joshua, hopefully some of you have seen some of his powerful videos that he's been able to put together. Um, he's an award-winning producer. Uh, he really helps to... Uh, take a you know more, maybe a more com complex message and be able to get it out in a way of video that that has a, a great impact. And Dale Hewitt Collier, who is the managing director of King's Council and Trust, uh, really has has put the stake in the ground for uh, not only being a strategic philanthropist but also helping us embody that now. Um, really looking at what is that legacy that we're that we want to leave and and how do we do that today and really sharing that with us. Um, also raising the bar on banking yourself and and much more and why we're here today. Um, I just realized that Dale somehow I missed. No, I did get the agenda. Yep, we're going to talk about bank failures. Got it. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Stop sharing. And uh, thank you for being here. Cool. Well, I hope everyone had uh, what was the kickoff of a wonderful Passover uh, into uh, the Easter weekend. Um, some in the more awake uh, sense of the word would call it pagan Christianity anymore. Because like, you know, what was that about? More about bunnies and eggs as opposed to the resurrection of Christ. But be that as it may, um, I'm glad who's here is here today because this in particular is something we've been talking about for a long time. But now that it's here, it's like, oh God, what do I do? You know, so what in the bank's going on and should you be worried? Last month, we just tipped on it because it had just happened. We didn't have a lot of information, but uh, does everyone understand what happened last, say, second week of March? Silicon Valley Bank? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It was uh, the failure of one of the biggest banks in the United States history, which if you didn't catch it in the news, because really no one was talking about it, there's so many other things to talk about that really have are much more important than bank and finance. I mean, wouldn't you agree um, that regardless of all of that, uh, the FDIC came right behind and shut down Signature Bank. And then a matter of days later, Credit Suisse, not just the United States, but we're talking about one of the biggest banks in the world, second largest in Switzerland. They're collapsing. And if it wasn't enough, uh, First Republic Bank, they started to come in. Uh, the, the, the Treasury's kind of freaking out. And wouldn't you know it, UBS comes to, to, to the rescue uh, to, to stabilize its work credit says All of this happened in about a week. And I would think, guys, this is a pretty important deal. 
and no one's talking about it. Why get involved in a family office? I can tell you there's one thing that has nothing to do with money, but it has everything to do with whether or not you're still going to have it next year, is that we have access to information that you're not getting mainstream with who we work with, where we work with, in the world at certain levels. You got to understand information is perhaps more valuable than the very dollars that we call, uh, you know, uh, as the economically valued today. That fiat is, is backed by nothing. And that's a problem. So how does that impact you? That's kind of what we want to get on here today. I would like to hear what you all have to say, because it doesn't matter what I know. It matters to me if you're getting it and you're working out the strategies. Uh, towards the end of this, I've got a few links that for anyone that's interested. Don't take our words for it. Do your research. This isn't uh, economic advice, financial advice, tax advice. This is common information. All of us, every, every, every day, we are social media sources. You know, just because it doesn't come through the Communist News Network or Fox or some other channel doesn't make it any less valid. They all interview people. You've got a voice. They've got a voice. It just so happens that on TikTok, you can have more of a voice than CNN in a week if you're popular. And they don't like that. They want to control that. A million or more influencers, the government's going to want to come in this bill, if you don't know about it, and tell you what you can and cannot say or do with what you have to share. I don't like that. I don't think you should either. Nevertheless, Peter Schiff, one of the biggest uh, out there in terms of money managers for the first time is actually coming back uh, to, to the mainstream and talking about what's going on with, with crypto. And potentially, if he's going to get involved, Mark Cuban's going to get involved. Mr. Wonderful's going to get involved. Wouldn't it be nice to have a token that's actually backed by gold? Stan, you know how important that is. If you all get a breakout room with Stan, let him introduce one of the things he's working on. Very exciting. But that's not the only game in town. It's not just gold. It's also silver. It makes sense that if we're going to shift to something, it better be backed by something. Because this we know to be true. And all of the, I think it's about eight, currency failures that have happened before when there's a reset there's never been ever in all of history a recovery with a fiat from a fiat we suspect as soon as this year maybe insofar as starting this summer now that real time payments have gone mainstream and most of the banks that have been you know had their 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 period to kind of get on board they're on board starting this summer you know, they'll be shifting away from the Fed Swift system towards this real time system. We believe that all of this is about scaring the hell out of people. Pardon the French. I don't know if even that is a French word, but um, scaring people so much that they want government to come in. They want to have regulation. They want safe. Let's face it. They don't know any better. They don't know any different because you're not hearing this stuff in the mainstream. So fortunately, we've got an app for that. Not just an app and a token, but a vault in a decentralized jurisdiction that make all of that possible should you care to lean in and learn a bit more about that. So bottom line, with all of this banking stuff, what does it mean to you? It, look, here's the simple you know, tea leaf uh, interpretation. If you don't have more than 250K in a bank, that doesn't apply to you today. By summer, you might want to have looked into an alternative to a bank. If you think you're going to be in a better cash position, I would suggest looking in something other than a bank. Look into another organization that provides banking services, credit unions. Maybe you've heard of them. Altogether different. They are not banks. They provide banking services, but they're not banks. So that's one thing. The other thing is, too, if you've got stocks in small banks. That's an interesting way to play. It's kind of like not only gold, but you've got stock in the gold producers, the gold miners, manufacturers, the plant and equipment, everything that goes into the gold industry. You might want to look into you adjusting your portfolio because there is fear. Again, no one's talking about it, but we believe that it's a controlled demolition, as it were, as they begin to shift into the central bank digital currency. You might want to kind of divest yourself of those bank stocks 
uh, unless you're playing the inverse. Again, that's an advanced strategy. I wouldn't recommend that if you're just looking for something to uh, as an alternative. Uh, suffice it to say, please, please, please look into your holdings. If you don't know what's in your holdings, let's say you hold mutual funds, for example, go get an analysis of what's in your mutual funds. It's not enough to say that I own a Vanguard this or uh, uh, you know, a Smith Barney that or something else. Look at what's in those things. You might find that there's a lot of extra exposure that, you know, candidly, you've you've already lost money this year. Why lose any more? From the business business perspective, there's four things you need to know. The cost of borrowing is going to go up. That's a matter of fact. The risk just got more, and risk. And when it tra translates to, to debt or credit, as it were, the credit markets is a function of interest rate. If you don't know that, we'll come back to that later. Suffice it to say, uh, in, the, in addition to the interest rate, you can bet, secondly, that the process, the due diligence process of lending, uh, going through the application, uh, will be tightened, which means that for most, it becomes more difficult of getting the money you need when you need it, especially if you're going after uh, or proving up the collateral that you say you owned, uh, that, that's a process in and of itself. I'm a big fan of if you're going to lend or seek loans, uh, they should be at least collateralized in some shape or form. The other thing is, uh, again, mentioned that if your reserves are investments in small banks, you're already hurting anyway. I mean, come on. Why are you keeping an interest-bearing checking account or a money market account in terms of, you know, it's one thing if you're looking for that for kind of a pseudo savings rainy day, but for, for a regular operating account um, and longer term holdings, you can do better, but it's not in the bank. I can assure you. By shifting to a broker dealer, for example, and using a money market fund as opposed to a bank savings or interest bearing checking fund, you, if you're a million dollar business, might just be able to, in that one shift, without changing any more to your top line, be able to pay for the person that answers your telephone. See, in a bank, you pay the bank money to use your money. That was their idea. Most of us buy into it, but that's a good idea. On the other hand, in the broker-dealer word, they pay you to use your money when you're not using your money. It's a better, altogether different thing if you're truly looking to enhance your operating account. More on that another time. Number four, the overall cost of goods and services is obviously going to go up because the length of in, you know, what's going on to what's called inflation. That's the hidden tax, okay? Because the Federal Reserve like it or not, they're going to take care of themselves. They're, they're going to, at the expense of the people, or they're going to take care of the people and they go bust. Which one do you think is the more likely outcome? Okay. And so since the people can't do it, they can't sell it to the people to finance the government's bills. They just print more money and they pass it on in the form, in the form of, well, you got more money. It takes more money to buy the same thing that you used to just buy. If you've been listening to us for the last few years, you know that gold is trading pretty well right now. You know that silver is doing really well right now. You can't go find an American Silver Eagle brand new for much less than $40. $40. Maybe a Canadian maple leaf or an Austrian uh, Philharmonic, perhaps maybe for 30. Where was silver last year? How well are you doing? If anyone, again, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you're going backwards, how much longer do you have to go backwards before you shift, before you get out of the boat? Maybe the easy way isn't going down the river because you might be going over a waterfall. Maybe it's the smart thing to do is just get out of the boat. Just a thought. So moving right along, what should you do about it? This is where God comes in. And this is where we're going to get to the second part of what I have to share with you today. It's a, it's a rededication of what are we doing? Where is God in all this? And, and the bottom line is, we know that uh, if, if you all want to pull up on the Bible Gateway, what have you, uh, Matthew 6, uh, verses uh, 31 to 34, we should be seeking God's wisdom, his discernment, and prayer, and his truth in the word. Because if the book of Revelation is true, 
if we know in Matthew, you know, they're asking, how are we going to know all well, when this happens? These are the signs. Okay. I think the signs are pretty much there. It, it doesn't end well for most. And so my point is simply this. If we're going through, we know that we're going to be equipped to go through. We're going to be that light, that lighthouse in the, in the storm that, that many ships, hopefully captains that have some experience, know how to navigate by in the times ahead. This is our time. And I believe this is more than that, our time in 2023 to, to shine. And, and we want to get prepared for that and a little bit more on that in just a, in a minute. But, uh, you know, if some of this is sounding new, gosh, there's so much that we have to offer in terms of big loop. Little, uh, as it were, kingdompreneurship. Take the entrepreneur and the guy that wants to put God first in his life, mash those two together like peanut butter and chocolate. It's a new thing. It's cool. You know, stewardship from the biblical perspective. What does that look like? I assure you, using credit cards isn't on that list. Just saying. Biblical economics. The root word of that is actually oikonomia, which is the dispensation of God's blessings, gifts, and talents to all people. It's not the same for everyone. God loves us equally, but we all get different portions of different things, you see. Definitely not socialism. Nevertheless, that's where economy comes from. And we'd like, they call it managing, you know, a finite supply against unlimited demand. Well, the God I know doesn't know anything to be finite. It's more infinite opportunity, infinite supply, infinite demand, maybe so. Never the way, there's so much in the way of infinite possibility with him. We can do all things through grace, no? I'm excited about that. I like to, what most of my team knows, we like to do things big enough to fail unless God steps in. <laughs> that way, we can't take any credit for that. We're, 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 some of us with projects, we're faced with that right now, believe it or not. It, we might look as cool as a, you know, one of those ducks across the pond, or make no mistake, our feet are going a million miles an hour. It's still looking cool. Um, next thing we can do, best practices. What are they? Most of us are always looking at, you know, what could go right, but our discernment says we should also be looking at what could go wrong, and are we preparing for it? What's the probabilities of that? We could look at things statistically, but I assure you that if God's doing a new thing, it's not going to look like the old thing. Some of those statistics may not apply. Just a thought. So we've already mentioned this before. Third thing, what we can practically be doing. Make sure your deposits do not exceed whatever the insurance limit is. Because in, in, the, in the brokerage world, it is higher than 250. For some of you that are getting funding, please have an alternative cash management strategy other than what you need, say, on a, on a, on a weekly to potentially monthly basis. Anything longer than that, I would be looking at a different store of value. Just a thought, because when you need the money, it may not actually be there. It may not have the purchasing power that you did uh, just a month ago. Fourth thing, keep some cash on hand. That's going to be different from everybody, but that is, our advice in this is also some precious metals. That's going to depend on household to household. That's going to depend on business to business. Bottom line is, I don't believe you should have any more than about a month's worth of silver you know, every day walking around money for coffee, gasoline, food, what have you. More than that, gold makes sense. It's just not possible, probable, at, or even feasible in some cases to be walking around with that much silver that you need as a store of longer term store of value. If you need to get into more of the weeds as to what to type in terms of what bullion, is it coin, is it matic, is it a bar, is it a round, is, is it online? Did you know that there's, there's actually crypto tokens that you can actually get involved with today that are backed by gold or silver? Where in the world are they? Who's talking about that? We've got a few recommendations. It's possible today. You can't leave here today and not do anything. Because you're going to have information that I assure you is, well, you will be forever un, uh, changed. You're not going to unlearn this stuff. You're going to start to hear it popping up more and more, and I hope you do. I hope you remember where, where you may have first heard. It doesn't matter that you come back for King's Council. What matters is you get your house in order and prepare accordingly. The fifth one, and this is perhaps our most favorite, is we as a family office, 
are talking about community, community, community. We're talking about, uh, as there's a word that many still struggle with called koinonia. What is that? It's a really in-depth, chewy word that, that, you know, we'll we'll study more of that. But 2023, we're going to get back to that. That's part of where, what our rededication is. Because I repent on behalf of everyone that we've ever, you may have met on behalf of King's Council, I feel that I got ahead of God. And I thought that that people with great projects really were the ones that the the going to make the difference in and, and what we we failed to to do well was to be a a, a greater inclusive body of everyone else it, it's almost like we we created our an alternative form of elitism that if you didn't have a project that you somehow weren't important and i'm here to say i'm sorry for that i, I let the, my excitement because of my ability to see how all of these things can be good in, in the kingdom sense of, of looking at things. Um, I didn't let everyone else have a voice as much as I should. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm repenting for that. And, and my mentors, my prayer warriors know how important that is to get it right. Because if the head's not right, you know, the rest of the boats, they're, well, it's like dangerous. So suffice, suffice to say, you know, as I've shared with you before, um, there's a lot to community. There's a lot that we are getting ready to to shift everything from our branding and our website and uh, and and outreach to be much more of a direct, uh, albeit. How should I say this? Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. A direct word. You know, the knife cuts both ways, and, and right now, politically correctness has gotten way out of hand. Uh, but we need to be truthful and, and loving in all our communications. So we want to be better about that too. And, and so all of that to say in, in Matthew 6, I'll just kind of paraphrase, you know, therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? You get the idea. Yeah, you know, everybody else in the world is saying, you know, that's what they're seeking. You know, but uh, Jesus goes on to say, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, but seek first. The kingdom of God doesn't see, mean seek your kingdom, then his. That's where we get sideways. Guilty is charged. Okay. Seek his kingdom first and his righteousness, right standing with dad. And all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. God knows it is. There's 24 hours in a day. I'm so glad there's not 36 especially now. So we invite you to, you know, join other kingdompreneurs as we go deeper into Koinonia this year and learn better strategies of, of how we can come together in crises to accelerate the growth of our businesses and organizations respectively, no matter what your stage. And those that are interested in knowing more, by all means, if you already know how to contact us, great. If anyone's kicking the tires in the con course of your conversation and they want to learn more about King's Council, don't wait until the, the, the next town hall next month. You know, there's a contact us thing. Let us know what you're interested in. There's about five general ways to kind of why someone would come to King's Council. Projects and, and capitals is just one, two. You know, there's trust and fiduciary, for example. There's some that have decided not to go back to corporate and they want to be advisors and consultants and volunteers. They want to be members of community. They want to be co-vestors. They want to get out of Wall Street. They're, in some cases, there, there's folks we're dealing with expatriating from other countries. Do you know that? You know, this isn't just the United States thing. This is a worldwide thing that's going on. And I'd like to think in this time that we've got an app for that, but we've got to be better about communicating very clearly about what we are, and more importantly, taking a stand against what we're not. Jurisdiction, it matters. So with that, I'm um, going to take a quick pause, take a breath, uh, let you know a couple references I have. If somebody likes the sound of these, just let me know here. Raise your hand. I'll drop them in. I'm not going to drop them right now, but number one, the fake banking system explained in five minutes. It's pretty cool. It's taken right out of the the uh, the creature from uh, Jekyll Island. And uh, did you know that Texas? You know, does everyone remember last year in uh, springtime we submitted a white paper to the state of Florida about getting on 
a gold or silver backed token, Florida having its own coin. It, it fell on deaf ears at the time. But lo and behold, Texas now has a bill because they understand the significance of the central bank digital currency threatening their economy. They have a bill that, that would create the first gold backed digital currency. That's exciting. There's precedent. You know, no one likes to be first. I get it. But Florida is one of the largest economies in the world. It's in the top 20. Uh, pay attention, please. Hello, before it's too late. Uh, the best backed gold backed cryptocurrencies. Now, there's a lot you need to know about what those are. It's not just buy this, buy this, buy this. You need to kind of need, you need to know what a crypto is in the first place. So a lot of these things I think might be beneficial. So that's why I've listed here a couple different resources. Uh, the top 10 gold-backed cryptocurrencies. By the way, there's also silver. We're a big fan of silver. I think that has a greater upshot than, than gold. Nevertheless, uh, there's more to that and why silver is more important as a currency than gold. The Bible has a lot to say about that. Peter Schiff, on two occasions, there's a part one and a part two about where he is, what's going on. He's a very credible talking head and personality in this day and age, but he's also been right a few times doing what he does in, in managing Euro Pacific capital, which as the United States citizens, you cannot be a client because that would be considering solicitation of offshore investments. There's a reason why, however, he's offshore. <laughs> Imagine that. Nevertheless, part two, he talks about exactly why an asset backed token may just make a lot of sense, particularly because he believes, as we just already covered, that the Federal Reserve is going to keep printing and printing and printing until oblivion. And most Americans are not wiser to, to, to even understand how that works or why. And lastly, I'll leave you with this one. And this one you can, Shannon, if you want to pop it in. Our solution is the secure vault. It's not just a gold or a silverback token, one for one. It's also good in your self-directed IRA because they are sovereign bullion coins. It's the only one that you can have in a rollover or self-directed IRA uh, plan, uh, including Canada, I might add. It's backed by the full faith. Government doesn't have to be an American Eagle. It can be another sovereign, such as the Royal Mint, the Perth Mint, Canadian Mint, what have you. Um, so if you're not pleased with how your retirement plan's going, you know, you've been told that you only have a 401k or 403b or through savings plan, whatever your plan is, it's all pre-tax. Yes, you can shift, but that's on you. It's called self-directed for a reason. You got to do it. No one can do it for you. So there's no investment advice there. In fact, you might actually have to sign up a, a bunch of acknowledgements to basically say that you're aware of that. We can help you though. We're right there with you. We're more or less partners in this because we're all doing this. We're co-vesting together our time, our talent, and our treasures. So there's plenty of tokens there. Uh, go learn more about it and connect with us. And um, so let me just uh, come back to where we are in rededication. We just spoke to Resurrection Sunday this past. And again, I'm grateful. But now the clock starts ticking in terms of that preparation. Does everybody know the word Pentecost? It was 50 days after. Um, our Jewish brethren would refer to that as Shavuot. And, and so there's an expectancy. There's, you know, Jesus said, I'm going to send you a helper. Not a checklist. Not a map. A helper. Relationship. I'm inviting you all in the next 50 days to do just that. To pause enough. I did a three-day technology fast, believe it or not. I turned off the computer, turned off the phone, everything. I, I went to old school, pen and paper, and listened. I didn't even speak. No words. Just listen. You know, when God speaks in that still, small voice, we, we, we have to be quiet enough that we actually hear it. Most of us are so busy with, you know, with... With, with the family, with the kids, with, with after school or, or whatever curricular activities, now that we're also back to work or whatever the case may be. When's the last time we actually stopped and were quiet long enough? Nothing, or even an hour. I want to invite you, each of you in your own way, uh, to do that, uh, to, to 
to, to focus on what's important and get number one back in your life. Um, and we invite you as we go through these next couple of weeks, you know, we can obviously have a check-in uh, next month be before that big day. But uh, on Friday, uh, the 26th from three to five, we're going to have a rededication ceremony uh, to, to invite any that will come and listen. They don't have to participate, really. They might just observe, you know, what in the world are you doing? Why is this important? Um, to come see and hear what we're doing to, to celebrate the rededication of our purpose on this planet. And that's to share some good news with any that will listen. God bless them if they don't. We only just dust off our, our shoes and, and keep on going. But this year, I believe 2023 is really special. And I can't share the fullness of why I believe that just yet in the time that we do have. Um, but with that, I'll just take a quick pause there and uh, invite Shannon to let us know how we can kind of um, do a little bit of network and meet and greet for some of the unfamiliar faces and uh, check in with one another. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you, Dale. And we have a lot of questions that came in. So we'll, I, I we'll, we, that. I'm glad I can't do all time. this at the same no, time. I, no, no, no. Just, <laughs> um, just if you want to look through those and I'm happy as we get done with this next networking cool. segment um, to, to go ahead and do the um, Q and A. So thank you all for your awesome questions and really grateful to have you. So right now we are going to get into a breakout room. You get to meet some of these amazing people, some of your your friends and family. Um, if you're not able to stick around, please let me know so I can um, separate the room. You're going to have three people in each uh, look in each room. And so with that, uh, find a timekeeper. Sorry, I'm still breaking up the room at the same time. I'm like, ah, I got a couple things here to shift out. So with that, you want to assign a timekeeper. We want to allow like a couple minutes each. Share who you are, what you're up to. Um, maybe there's something that spoke to your, your, your re what are you rededicating to? Or maybe there's something along what Dale was talking about that you want to share. Or this is a great opportunity if there's something that you're looking for in your business or in your personal life to ask somebody in this community. It's really amazing um, just by asking for what you're looking for, if there's something you'd like support with. Uh, they may not be able to help you right there, but they may get into another section or another, you know, throughout the day and, and find somebody to make that connection. So this is a quick meet and greet. Uh, you do want to be certain that you uh, have your phone number and contact information that you can drop into the, the group and uh, that way you can follow up afterwards. So real quick touch base. Um, and so if there's questions and stuff, either keep them in the chat or do a follow up. And then the other piece is be certain that everybody, like when the timekeeper says we've got 10 seconds left or two minutes up, make sure that you allow enough time for the even the last person to go. Go ahead and, and wrap it up quickly so that we make sure that all the um, participants have a chance to share. So once you get into the room, you're going to go ahead and figure out a timekeeper. You'll have two minutes each. Um, and we have an amazing community here today. So let me just swap one more here. And I think we are ready to go. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and open up the rooms now. Anything I forgot? Cheryl, Thomas, Dale? All right. I don't think so. Okay. Have fun. Where's the... This is my favorite part. <laughs> We were not done and you kicked us out. Oh, I'm, just... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, and we have, just so you guys know, for the rededication um, ceremony and celebration, we should probably call it a celebration, um, we have a number of breakout rooms that we have planned for a little bit longer. And so um, really excited about that. Couldn't um, open that link. I tried it twice. Yep, I'm putting, I'm putting the actual Zoom link and everything in here again because I know sometimes that short link acts up and, um, and then we'll go from there. And Dale, I know there were a number of questions. Um, normally I'd say meet somebody new, but I seem like there was a lot there. So is it okay if we go through some of those questions? We can, I, I just like to put it out there before anyone else might have to leave at the top of the hour. Uh, one of the things that was really obvious in addition to all those questions is ask for it from the desk of Dale. It would really help me Going forward, if we could have, if nothing else, in our newsletter section, 
uh, a small piece from, from Dale on one particular topic, one particular question that might matter to you all. And we're going to let you guys decide. So we'd like to hear from you, whatever that burning question is that you'd like in the next month's newsletter. Um, just I'm giving you permission. Uh, let it fly and, uh, you know, put it in the contact, whatever the case may be. We'll take a poll as to what the more popular is. I'm sure there'd be lots of questions. If you don't know this already, in our frequently asked questions section of the cloud, the box, the, the massive library that we have, we have more than a thousand questions that have already been asked and answered. Which one to start with? That depends on you guys. So I invite you to do that. So, but go ahead, Shannon, with Okay, What's so next? do you recommend silver over gold? And Cheryl, so, I updated the PowerPoint to have the proper T. Thank you, David. Dunn. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, I, I asked this question, Dale, and I think you answered it sort of, but I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say because it sounded like silver was maybe the... Yes. Preferred. Yeah, okay. silver was the currency and back in shekels of the day, it wasn't gold. Gold was for wealth preservation, but for currency everyday exchanges, silver is is the preferred. Okay. If it's sovereign, even if it's, as they say, junk silver, old coins that were had a certain amount of silver in them, but they've been taken out of currency, that's going to have a lot more credibility than just a plain round or a bar, as the case may be, where no one may know about what's in the bar, because unfortunately, there's a lot of, you know, not so upstanding characters out there. So, and so if I we have a big jar, like massive thing of change, should we keep it i would okay. pennies are worth especially the copper ones are worth more than a penny okay for example and then dale if somebody wanted to get silver or gold how would you suggest they acquire that um best to email me directly as specifically as you can that's going to depend on your individual situation your household and or your business uh, and to determining in terms of whether it's qualified money you're acquiring it with or non-qualified money, but there's applications for both, where to store it, uh, how much to have on hand. And beyond that, there's it's more to ask and answer in, in this couple of minutes. Okay. And I'm just going to- And that includes crypto related token back coins as well. Just if you don't know about that, please visit uh, secure vault. There's a lot of FAQs about that. We've got a lot more that I also kind of referenced before uh, based on today's topic. And I just wanted to add one of the things that I loved about getting my house in order and getting silver um, through you is that later on down the road, I needed a little bit of a loan. Can you talk just, is that appropriate for this? Please, if you're going to acquire it for the long haul, uh, part of not just banking on yourself with whole life insurance policy or similar related assets is that you can bank on each other. That's one thing that we're doing here that nobody, very few other people, I should say, not nobody uh, in the world are doing. And that is if some brother or sister needs, we happen to know that there's, I'll just say a box of silver. A box of silver is 15 to 20 grand, depending on what's in the box. But you know, if we can do that for each other, uh, that's providing a collateral in the event that you default. Uh, the other party that's lending the liquidity, case of emergency, short-term need, whatever the case may be, can can collect on that. And that's in in all of the years that we've been doing this, uh, there's never been an issue or a default. So that's how we learn to take care of each other. Please, the last thing you could do. This is practical advice. If you've got a Picasso hanging on the wall and you need to boil a pot of water, do not rip it apart and burn up the frame. You know, to do so, that's just asinine. Okay, there's there's probably somebody that can help out. It begs to ask the question. Hey, this is what I have. I could use a hand here. You know, never ever ever, in my opinion, should anyone ask for an unsolicited or uncollateralized loan. Always lead with collateral, always lead with value in exchange for a little bit of liquidity. And nine times out of 10, you're usually going to get, well, yes, I can. Or if it's not me, then I know someone who can. I'm hungry. I need a sandwich. What can I do to, to work for that piece of sandwich? That sounds a lot better than may I have $10, for example. Okay. Next question. Um, gold, do you recommend taking delivery? Um, how would you hold it at an IRS approved vault or self-directed IRA approval? There's kind of two, there's multiple questions there. Gold, 
take it if you can up to a certain point. Again, uh, you want to know when it's time to go that you can actually carry it. So a box of silver is just under 40 pounds. An equivalent amount of gold it is a lot less. Um, I recommend personally about three months on hand in terms of wealth. All else should be in a, in a secured vault somewhere else if it's a million dollars or more in, in holdings. Uh, otherwise, uh, another trusted party could be your neighbor. Um, but uh, the long and the short of it is how it is held in what form of bullion, uh, back to the qualified question in the retirement plan, will determine what form of bullion it can be as well, because that, that has its own set of rules. So if that applies, we can certainly help. We uh, work with uh, two, now three of the larger custodians in the United States that are IRS approved and um, you know, been around for, for decades to, to help do this. This is not a new thing. Next one. Um, just Stuart, I'm gonna keep following your thread because I know you're probably piggybacking on this and we'll go back to some other questions. What about portable worth of VVS one and a half carat diamonds so you can run with it? Believe it or not, there's actually tokenized diamonds now too. So um, yes, uh, all diamonds uh, are typically going to be exchangeable. Uh, I know we've got a couple vendors that uh, will lend against them, but in this case, uh, Stuart, they have to be a carrot or more. And do but they go down? Do they only will they only go down to VVS two and above or nitrogen? Like where? Did, what will they only receive? It will they any, take anything or what? It's at least a carrot to even look at it. So okay. it, it depends on its application. If if it's going to be a jewelry or some other thing. Um, okay. And the other thing, like I said, for anyone else, look into digital diamonds. You, you'll be able to find them tokenized as well that are not tied to one carrot per se, but are usually tied to again a pool uh, of diamonds of a particular quality and that's part of what you're asking i think Stuart. yeah well the, the i don't jews know specifically were, the jews were tailors and uh jewelers so they would yes. sew the diamonds into the lapels to run from hitler so oh, yeah. they would have portable <laughs> wealth but um i have a whole room on linkedin of hundreds of diamond people and it's rough diamond trade only i haven't been able to monetize the room but if we have weight alone against it i've got hundreds of people i can advertise to so like they talk to you about that. Okay. Carrot, carrot or more is the rule of thumb. That, could, that goes for whatever you're wearing. It could be an engagement ring. It doesn't matter that someone may have paid $10,000 for it. it the, the first cut criteria is the size. Are we normally getting 50% of the value that the, um, in, you know, got the loop? Typically. Out? Typically, yes, at least 50%, it, depending on if it's gold, silver, or other things, uh, it, it can be more. It depends on what its marginable rate is. And again, much I, I hate to say kind of like a, a pawn shop, this is very specialized area of lending. Um, nevertheless, it is possible. Please don't go just sell your heirloom jewels, jewels uh, and pieces if you, if you don't have to. Thanks. Ask first. Thank you. Next. Awesome. Um, as far as the vault, um, can they cash out the token and get physical gold? Um, can we pay utility bills with the QVR token? Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Ideal at, at this stage, it, there's always going to be an exchange from one form of currency to another. Think of like the electric company versus my company. Okay. They may as well be two different countries. There will need to be a currency exchange. They might not take this token today, um, but tomorrow they, they could. You know, a good example is Starbucks was one of the first mainstream retailers out there to accept Bitcoin for a cup of coffee, as crazy as that sounds. Nevertheless, as things become more mainstream, you will start begin to see POS uh, devices that may be not just one, but maybe two forms of exchange. Uh, that depends. Stanley and, and what he's doing, he's got more of an online uh, application with Wintrip uh, where, where that's built into a, a affinity. So there's lots of different things that are coming down the line. In the meantime, it, worst comes to worst, you will have to get out of one and exchange it for a local currency usually somewhere in the world uh, to pay a bill as the case may be. 
All we can do as consumers, though, is start saying, hey, at our favorite restaurants, at our favorite this, that, and the other, particularly if we're loving our neighbor buying locally, hey, would you start carrying this or consider this at, at the point of exchange? Because this will help you put more money in your pocket. I don't know if you all do this. Everywhere I go that they offer credit or debit, I'm telling the person at the register, you want to do this in debit because here's why. You can put 2% more cash back in the owner's pocket. Bring that up to the next employee's you know, meeting that you have. They're like, what? It, it's, please do it. You know, 2% adds up, but that's about the going rate between debits and credits. And most, most folks at the point of sale don't know that. Business owners know that. Maybe, but at the register, they don't know what they don't know. So anytime you can talk about putting money into your favorite vendor's pocket, have that conversation. Beautiful. So we're at the top of the hour, um, and I know there's more questions coming in. Let me just go ahead and close this out for people who want to go. And Dale, I know that you have another meeting after this. I don't know if you wanted to answer a few more questions, or you can um, send an email to the help desk which is help.desk um, at KCT, I'm sorry, at kingscouncilandtrust.com. Um, okay. So I'm gonna just do a couple things and then I'll turn it over to you on whatever you wanna do. So just wanna remind everybody about the rededication. Um, I did include the Zoom link in there and uh, you know, ha having been a part of the inside, I have to tell you guys if this, this is, I, I am so inspired by um, by what KCT is doing and, and look forward to um, having you, each of you be on this journey with us. I mean, the big part right now is that self-reflection, like what's working, what's not working, what needs improvement. You know, we're, we're in this new time. What, what, how, how are we going to pivot or redirect? And um, I'm really hoping that you take that time. And as we're sharing things in the emails, I did put the email um, link in there. If you're not getting the emails, please let us know. Uh, but would love to have you join us on May 26th from 3 to 5. Uh, it's going to be great and uh, wonderful things happening there. So with that, Dale, I'm going to let you do closing remarks. Um, and if there's um, anything else you need, put yeah, it Yeah, I'm just there. looking at the retainers. What are you looking to do with the, with the wallet, uh, Stuart? Um, basically, I'm just going, I'm taking that whole idea and added a total of eight strategies to it that one, uh, it's called activate. So I'm opening with that and going to corporations saying if I could save you $800 uh, on FICA tax and add another half million a year every year to the employee base, you know, um, would you were, be open to having a meeting so that usually gets a meeting. Um, but then I'm saying, because so many people, once you tell them the secret, they just dish you and leave and you, you're left holding the bag or you're not holding anything. So I came yeah. up with this. God gave me this idea for a 300 percent money back guarantee, it, you know, since our deliverable is wisdom, knowledge, secrets and strategies. If we deliver them uh, and tell you how to do it and you choose not to work with us to accomplish it, uh, you know, we've earned are, are one third of what I'll save you the first year. So if we're going to save you 30 million, you know, retainer would be 10 million. Or if we're going to save you 10 million, it'd be three, 3 million with a lot of threes. And so I'd like to put in a three SIG wallet. And then if I do my job, I, I get paid. I see. Interesting approach. I uh, don't know offhand, um, but I like your thinking for sure. It's basically at no risk. You know, you do what you say, you get paid. If you don't, you won't. So yeah, money back guarantee. Sure. And then ten percent of all future savings, you guys keep ninety percent. That's what I'm telling. So because like you guys are saying, how's my cash flow? Or Richter was, and I was like, well, I could improve yeah. that. So that's how I'm really focusing on stacking cash flows. So, but nice. then that's when getting burnt. I told this this small church that I thought would be, you know I was not talking to the decision maker who mm -hmm. values some of these things like giving another half million to the 111 person staff. Uh, he, the comptroller is like, I only get a bonus on dollars saved. So activate saved them 88,000 a year, every year. And then, mm -hmm. but the employees got another half mil to the payroll for doing nothing, right? Because of that sure. product. And he's like, I don't care about that. I'm not even gonna tell the pastor. So I haven't been able to, I, you know, I got you gotta talk to the right guy. I got burned on that one. So um, anyways, that's why I'd like to have some kind of retainer it's not so crypto-ish because I'm, I'm of course down with the crypto. I've been in this since 17, 
managed 25 people's accounts with you know two fas and all that insanity but a lot of people just you know I just, if there's a, some kind of retainer that like a lawyer would do or even if you're closing on a house you have to have a you know some kind of um uh, well, i forget the ter term for it but uh, you have to put the money in escrow an escrow account that i can i some kind of cash escrow that i can't get burnt on so that's the yeah. question yeah, in short, I think that in attorneys, I also account, regardless of what state you may be doing it in, uh, may be the, the short and sweet answer, but um, I don't know otherwise offhand where someone would have credibility in, in terms of a wallet, at least not yet. So um, Nadine, also up above, hopefully I answered your question. The If you're currently holding a token now, and you're looking to redeem, change, shift, move it, what have you. In the meantime, this applies to anyone. If you could identify the exchange and and maybe you know what else is trading to, uh, if you don't know anything about that, at least find out what exchange you're on. There's a number of them out there. I don't keep track of all of them. And lastly, but not least, let me just close you with uh, you know something that Lauren said about when right? it's so apropos as to what's going on in the world. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, not anybody else's name, my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. My desire for all of you is whatever that means to you, and where you are and which part of the land you represent is to, you know, seek his face, listen, and don't move until he says otherwise. You know, we're in that position of getting in our house in order and waiting on the Lord to move. And we expect when that happens, go boom. It's not a time to get started. It's a time to go then. This is this is our uh, penance time, as it were. And and lean more about that you know we there's even a prayer group that's got started this last go around i can't follow everybody's prayer group or everybody's mission and, and story as the case may be this is not about dale folks this is about the king of kings and uh i just invite you to to all lean in and and seek his face and and learn how you can be a part of this great next great move of god not the move but the next great move i'd like to think all of us here have a have a play have a have a position to play in in his master plan. So with that, thank you again for your participation today and uh, look forward to what's in store and mark the calendar for the next town hall first or second Tuesday. Is that right, Shannon? Yeah, the next town hall is going to be May 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fantastic. So uh, anyone, you don't have to repeat today, just uh, when the link comes out or it gets on YouTube or what have you, just here, go watch this guy and some of what we talked about and uh, see you next time around, if not before. Thanks all. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye, Alex. That was good, yeah. Shannon. Uh, the, I know the Lord hides stuff from you, for you, but if he reveals it, it's because he's giving you the plan, the details, and the timing because it's time to go do it. <laughs> So that's, uh, I learned that in Gary Cassie's course at Faith Life Now in Ohio. Really, really powerful stuff because the laws of the kingdom work every time for you, anyone on earth that's Christian, because it's our inheritance. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, if, if the stuff's coming out, it's time to go with it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank well, thanks you. for trying to help me with that guy who was getting funded for the right frequency. That would have been cool. He was literally going to destroy cancer in a zero grab chair while you're relaxing and we just couldn't get them funded. So I guess nobody likes, um, I, I had one more person pop up, but I think they, I don't remember. Did he get funded or did it move on? Let me stop this. No. Oh, go ahead. He did not get,